the greatest and most favored nation upon the earth is the United States. A gracious providence has shielded this country and poured upon her the choicest of heaven's blessings. Here the persecuted and oppressed have found refuge. Here the Christian faith in its purity has been taught. This people have been the recipients of great light and unrivaled mercies, but these gifts have been repaid by ingratitude and forgetfulness of God. The Infinite One keeps a reckoning with the nations, and their guilt is proportioned to the light rejected. A fearful record now stands in the register of heaven against our land, but the crime which shall fill up the measure of her iniquity is that of making void the law of God. Between the laws of men and the precepts of Jehovah will come the last great conflict of the controversy between truth and error. Upon this battle we are now entering. A battle not between rival churches contending for the supremacy, but between the religion of the Bible and the religion of fable and tradition. The agencies which will unite against truth and righteousness in this contest are now actively at work. God's holy word, which has been handed down to us at such a cost of suffering and blood, is but little valued. The Bible is within reach of all, but there are few who really accept it as the guide of life. Infidelity prevails to an alarming extent, not in the world merely, but in the church. Many have come to deny doctrines which are the very pillars of the Christian faith. The great facts of creation as presented by the inspired writers, the fall of man, the atonement, and the perpetuity of the law of God are practically rejected by a large scale of the professedly Christian world. Thousands who pride themselves upon their wisdom and independence regard it an evidence of weakness to place implicit confidence in the Bible and a proof of superior talent and learning to cavil at the scriptures and to spiritualize and explain away their most important truths. Many ministers are teaching their people and many professors and teachers are instructing their students that the law of God has been changed or abrogated and they ridicule those who are so simple-minded as to acknowledge all its claims. In rejecting the truth men reject its author. In trampling upon the law of God, they deny the authority of the lawgiver. It is as easy to make an idol of false doctrines and theories as to fashion an idol of wood or stone. Satan leads men to conceive of God in a false character, as having attributes which he does not possess. A philosophical idol is enthroned in the place of Jehovah, while the true God, as he is revealed in his word, in Christ and in the works of creation is worshipped by but few. Thousands deify nature while they deny the God of nature. Though in a different form, idolatry exists in the Christian world today as verily as it existed among ancient Israel in the days of Elijah. The God of many professedly wise men, of philosophers, poets, politicians, journalists, the God of polished, fashionable circles, of many colleges and universities, even of some theological institutions, is little better than Baal, the sun god of Phoenicia. No error accepted by the Christian world strikes more boldly against the authority of heaven. None is more directly opposed to the dictates of reason. None is more pernicious in its results than the modern doctrine so rapidly gaining ground that God's law is no longer obligatory upon men. Every nation has its laws, which command respect and obedience, and has the creator of the heavens and the earth no law to govern the beings he has made? Suppose that prominent ministers were publicly to teach that the statutes which govern our nation and protect the rights of its citizens were not obligatory that they restricted the liberties of the people and therefore ought not to be obeyed. How long would such men be tolerated in the pulpit? But is it a graver offense to disregard the law of the states and nations than to trample upon those divine precepts which are the foundation of all government? 
When the standard of righteousness is set aside, the way is open for the prince of evil to establish his rule in earth. It would be far more consistent for nations to abolish their statutes and permit the people to do as they please than for the ruler of the universe to annul his law and leave the world without a standard to condemn the guilty or justify the obedient. Would we know the result of making void the law of God? The experiment has been tried. Terrible were the scenes enacted in France when atheism became the controlling power. It was then demonstrated to the world that to throw off the restraints which God has imposed is to accept the rule of the cruelest of tyrants. And that is exactly what the leaders of this world are prophesied to do under the direct leadership of Satan's man of sin in Rome. Thank you for watching. God bless.